Hello everyone, my name is Shake and I'm here playing Eve Online. As some of you have already, I don't know, uh, got it right when I was, you know, giving some hints about the next game that I was going to record videos of. And, and yeah, it is Eve Online. I just created a new character. I have been playing this game, I don't know, for, I don't know, a lot of years. And. You know, I decided to create a new character to show you the stuff. Because in this game, as some of you may know, if if you show all your information, what you have, where you usually move and everything, your life, you know, gets suddenly tougher than it usually was. So, okay, so I'm gonna treat this as a, you know, for viewers that it is the first time they hear about the online. So what is Eve Online? Eve Online is a spaceships based MMORPG where you know you have a character which is uh, this one like it? it's kind of a Jedi Kung Fu master <laughs> and yeah we can see the full body Ooh, loading there you go Right, so you have a character, but you know, it is not that important. So you get to see it on the captain's quarters. There are four base uh, races, we can say. We have the Amar, we have the Mimatar, we have the Galente, and we have the Kaldari. Uh, those are like the four base races. The Amar are like a religious type of faction, and it is the biggest one, you know, domain wise. They dominate like a lot of solar systems. Then you have the Kaldari, which is more like a corporation that, you know, the manufactures stuff and buy and sell and all that. And then you have the Galente, which are the high tech. Yeah, we can call yeah we can call it high tech. You know they develop drones and that type of stuff, and they look forward to uni peace in the universe, freedom and that type of stuff. And then you have the Mimatar, which are ex-slaves of the Amar. They just got you know got their uh, they earned their own freedom and and it they are like the most trashy of all races. You know, people always joke about them, you know, by saying that they build a, <laughs> their their ships with scraps and, you know, wrecks from other ships. And they, they actually do that, uh, look that way. So. <laughs> okay, whatever. This is, this is my guy. That's my ship. It is this the first ship that you get when you create a character. It's, it is a ship that you will always be getting for free every time you die and you have nothing else. So, there is always that hope. Uh, the Amar is always with this yellow, golden, shiny theme. All the space and buildings and ships. The Kildari is a grey, bluish. Then you have... Well, it's more blue than grey, but the, the ships are usually grey. Then you have the Galente, which is, a, I would say, a green with touches of blue, I'd say. It is basically green. And then you have the Mimatar, which is brown and red. Reddish brown. Right, so these are my quarters. You can change the appearance of, of the character here. That door is supposed to lead to the rest of the station where I'm at now. It is locked because they didn't, you know, develop this bit yet. But it is, you know. Eventually, the point of this is, you know, to get to the to an open area and be able to interact with other players. But they are, you know, not focusing on that right now. Ooh. Right, so you can sit here and chill out while, you know, watching information. This would be the planet. The game has planets, as in, I don't know, a real-time strategy game in which you get to put buildings and extract materials, manufacture stuff. So then you can use that to build other stuff, bigger stuff, or just, you know, sell it to get some profit. Oh, that I... That is, these are the news in the center, so that's like a bounty set for that woman. 
for only 60 billion. Which is a lot. <laughs> what else? This this would be my corporation. All players have to have a corporation. So the moment you log in, you start on a an NPC corporation. Which they always have the taxes up to eleven percent. Right. Uh, what else do we have here? Ooh, skill training alert. I don't have skills. So, how does this game work? I'm going to explain the game by browsing through the menus, okay? But just before that, I'm going to give you a quick lore intro. So, the humanity, like, let's say the year 3000 or something like that, or 3000 and something, they, they you know, developed the technology to reach the skies, space, and travel to, you know, faraway places. They suddenly found a wormhole, uh, which, you know, led, led them to a unknown region of space, probably super far away from the Earth. Uh, so they started, you know, moving stuff there, uh, as in freighters and heavy stuff to start building and colonizing all those new planets and regions. And it was all humans there. But suddenly, uh, the the wormhole collapsed. The, if gate because uh, it collapsed and yeah because the wormholes are unstable and you know that type of stuff uh, so it collapsed and you know with the explosion it kind of destroyed pretty much all the technology on on new new Eden's side which is how they call the new place they found themselves on this strange new region of space and they called it new Eden and we don't know about what happened on the other side. Maybe, probably as well, you know, eradicated all the human race from Earth. I don't know. <laughs> but we don't know. So the thing is, all these races, all the technology was pretty much wiped out. So it took some centuries and, and research to, you know, to get to the skies again, to develop starships. Each one of them, each, each race, each faction, with their own pros and cons, with their own technology, their own weapons, they are all different. So it all began there when they all, you know, clashed down. Uh, the Amar took over a lot of, you know, new worlds, including the Mimatar world, taking them as slaves. And the Kaldar and the Galen, they got their, their situation there. They got into a warfare situation. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the the lore before the game. Now you take into the body of one of those races, but you can still play for whatever faction you want. So you just create a race that you want, that you like, that you you like how it looks like or whatever, and just go ahead and enjoy the game. So the game is about getting better and newer. Uh, Starship, starships, upgrading them and joining other players if you want to to do greater stuff. Or you can do stuff by yourself anyway. So I'm gonna move to the let's say the character, yeah, the character sheet here. So the thing here is in this game, you know, in other games, have to play to get gear, and the gear is pretty much the center of the game of the progression. Right. So. In this game, this game is skill based. There are no levels, there are just skills. So th this is one of them, for instance. CPU management. This indicates the, the amount of CPU that you have on your ship to, you know, to fit modules and weapons and whatever. Uh, so the higher it is, you know, the more stuff you can put in it. And all skills have five levels, so you can train them. It would take me 20 hours and 41 minutes to get to level four, which would increase my the CPU. Uh, yeah, right. The CPU output. Yeah, I'm just realizing that. Yeah, there are only 5 minutes, servers will be going down for 10 minutes. 
so I may start the you know I may split the video in, in two and then put them together whatever so the game is skill based the thing about this is that you can train the skills even when you are not playing the game as seen the character progress even when you are offline so you could just queue like a skill for 20 hours just you know log in tomorrow and it will it will be trained and your character will be better and yeah we have the countdown really I didn't count on that whatever and um, what else decorations decorations medals and that type of stuff is is given to you by the corporations you are you are in you know as in when you do something extraordinary or whatever attributes classic on an, on MMORPGs in this case instead of having strength and dexterity and that type of physical stuff it is all related to mind because you control the ship with your mind let me show it to you uh, whoops that's the menu stand stand I say Yeah, it takes a bit of time walking. You can just skip this by clicking one of those buttons, but I think it is cooler doing it this way. There is my ship floating and spinning slowly. Okay, you see that thing? That is the pod I'm getting in. I will have like cables plugged into my back. Boom. So yeah, that's pretty much, it's a matrix style type of connection with the ship. No, and I'm gonna dock. I'm gonna switch to the hangar, which is this one. Uh, okay, I'm gonna show you more stuff. Augment augmentations. These are like implants that you use to improve your statistics and other, I think, plus five uh, intelligence and that type of stuff. Jump clones. You can get more than five jump clones, I don't recall which, how many of them, maybe ten jump clones and you can spread them through the universe to gen just, they are called jump clones because you can jump between them I think I'm doing stuff here, then I uh, I come to this menu, click on another clone and zoom, suddenly I'm at the other, you know, at the other end of the universe or something but I remember that you need to get you, ha you have to have cash for that because you need to get ships for each clone as they are you know that far away from each other uh, they, only the the mind teleports to the other clone not the ships biography well employment history and uh, these tracks all and i'm gonna say boldly all your activity all the corporations you have been in and and pretty much that everything so people check this when you want to join a corporation I mean you have been in a, in a rival corporation or something or a pirate corporation they just won't get you you know to join their corporation because they they don't trust you standing well standing towards factions towards players towards everything and that grants you bonuses and unlock new features and Security, everybody starts with zero and it is raised by, you know, doing PvE stuff as in fighting off pirates or performing missions for the factions and that type of stuff. And it is lowered by, you know, killing other players and doing nasty things. Uh, so yeah. What else? Skill rights. When somebody steals stuff from you from space or do something bad to you but not direct damage, it is put on that list so you can fight back without the police, the guards, kicking your ass. Combat luck, all your losses and your kills are listed here. As in with all the ship fitting and everything that you have. Pilot license is what allows you to play the game monthly. You can buy these items, they are like virtual items, you can buy them and and sell them on the market, you know, so the company kinda handles the RMT aspect of the game which is pretty cool and that's all i'm gonna split the video i'm gonna stop recording and we'll do another video okay right so i'm gonna show you now the 
the universe map. Well, this one is the star map of the solar system that I currently am at. We click here to switch to the universe map, which takes a bit to load and it is huge. We'll show you the magnitude of the game. Right, so it, you know, usually it is a 3D map type of thing like this. It is impossible to see or find yourself or look, you know, orientate. It's impossible. So if you turn these hexes and and colors and everything, it kind of gives you a better idea of where you're at, which I currently don't know. Yeah, I'm sure it be. Yeah. There I am. Right, so each dot it is a solar system which has several planets, moons and asteroid belts. So if you take take a look at this all this purple area, this is all Amara space, which is the biggest one of the four factions. This one is Galenta space. The blue one is Caldari space. And these light purple one is the Mimato space, the, the, the smaller it's, it's actually the smallest one uh, whatever so this one's around like this, this, this they are NPC faction controlled but you know if I zoom out completely all these which you know, has the red dots like this one. All these are controlled by players. They, they, they rule the systems. You know, a corporation rule the system, or an alliance of corporations rule the system, and and they put like outposts and and player-owned structures and that type of stuff. And they control, and they have to hold their ground because other alliances they 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 won their resources or the system so they must defend it against others it is a all-out warfare pretty cool pvp hardcore high-end and it is what a, not a lot of people like but some others like and it's why they stick to this game uh, still it is not all pvp there are industry research manufacture Okay, so all these lines that connect the, the dots, they are like stargates, like the ones in the movie, but you know, big ass stargates, you know, where freighters and big ships can go through. And they are, they are the ones that connect the systems. So if I want to go... If I want to go... There we go. If I want to go here... Oh, why would I click it? If I want to go to Teshi or whatever that is called, I must go this first and then go to Teshi. Yeah. So they are like highways in space, you can say. Yeah, so this is the map. Then you have the solar system map, which is this one. If I zoom in a lot, you will find out that I am... That I have this shit on. Uh, well, this is a moon, this is the station I'm at, and here you have two stargates and, and this is the planet. If I zoom out, you see that there are, there's a lot of stuff happening and going on here. Okay, so let's zoom out. Let's, you know, let's browse the menu to all the options. Oh shit. I'm gonna reset it. Yeah. Okay, this is the sorry. This is the channels. It is a chat, basically. You can there are categories. You can open your own chat, talk to your friends. You can pick one of these, join them. There are you know, not very populated. Trade, English recruitment. Whatever. So um. This is the inventory, it shows the things that my ship has in the cargo hold. The, sh the things that... The ships that I have on this station, and the items that I have on this station. So the ships, this one 
it's the only one that I have, it is a rook ship and it is on green which means it is my currently active, my current active ship. Here I have in my ship a Tritanium unit which I can drag and drop here so it would be on the station. So if I right now if I move out onto the next system that Tritanium will remain at this station but I'm gonna take it with me. Okay, what else? People and places. Here you can, you know, um, classify your contacts by, you know, if they are good, bad, as in pirates or whatever. And you have the watch list, which is a notification list that will, you know, notify you, of course, every time a good or bad guy that, that you put on that list will connect, log in and out. Which is very useful, for instance, I don't know, for pirates, if, if you know that there is this pirate always around your area and you see him logging in, you just get back to the station and avoid troubles. Okay, what else? The mail, it is a full client mail, although it is in-game. You can also send mails on the website, they have that possibility if you log in to gate.evilnight.com, I think. Okay, it has the inbox, send folder, corp alliance trust. You can even label the the mails and get into mailing lists, which are usually used for trading and that type of stuff. What else? Oh yeah, fitting. So you buy this ship or you get a ship and it is only the hull and it is completely empty. You gotta fill it with modules. So this is what fitting is for. In this case, this is the starting ship. You see, I can spin it. And this is the starting ship. So I I got a pretty pretty basic pulse laser, which is a weapon, of course, and I have a civilian miner, which is a mining laser, you can say. And the other two slots here and here are empty, which means that I can put stuff in them to improve the, I don't know, the, the shield, the armor, the attack of my ship. It's pretty much what it is for. So this is the cargo hold size. This is the drone bay size, which is only room for one light drone, but there is one drone. This is the CPU, which is the blue line. I, you know, currently have it at 67% and the power of greed. Those two stats will be filling up as I add modules, so you gotta fine tuning, you know, to get the proper modules you want to use the most CPU and power of greed quantity possible, which means that your ship will be maxed out. So statistics, uh, DPS, you know, this from other MMORPGs, damage per second, drone damage per second, and this is missile damage per second. Uh, th those are the three main weapon types. The turrets, which can be... Uh, ah, ammunition, no, I'm not ammunition, how about? Artillery turrets, artillery, no. Oh, projectile turrets, laser turrets, and hybrid turrets. Those are the three main turret types. Then you have drones, then you have missiles, which are usually a Caldari thing. So, uh, they split the damage types into four, which are electromagnetics, uh, thermal, kinetic, and explosive. Uh, the thing is, of course, that electromagnetic damage deals more damage to the shield, which is an energy shield. So, it has zero resistances you know, to start with, then you can improve this, of course. And, of course, this resists explosions and kinetic damage, kinetic hit, because it is an energy shield. On the other hand, the armor uh, protects you from electromagnetic pulses and damage a lot, because it is a physical thing. And, on the other hand, the explosions and kinetic damage kind of hit hard the, the armor. Once you get out of uh, shield and armor, there is only the whole destructor of the of the ship, which is the last thin line that you know keeps you from blowing up. So usually the ships have zero on structure that you can you know further improve it with modules. But ooh, that's a thing. So watch it. What else? Number of targets that I can 
target at the same time with the ship. Uh, this is the mass of the ship. The smaller this is, the, the more agile the ship is. Uh, this is the inertia modifier, another measure for uh, agility. And this is the warping speed, which is fairly low this on this ship, but you know, when you get a, I don't know, fast ships or specific ships to warp fast, it is like triple of that, and they go fast as hell when warping. Uh, what else? Uh, regional market. Here you have categories of items, and then subcategories, and, and then you can buy them. It says jumps, you know, till the object because it is a regional market. So each ex uh, station have a. You can you know you can put items on sale on on all the stations, but you get to see the whole region. So if you find a cheaper, I don't know, a cheaper drone, a fighter bomber. Well, let's go for ammunition, hybrid, whatever. If you find this ammunition, uh, let's go for price. On this case, yeah, the the cheapest are, are on this station two jumps away, and ten jumps away there are, you know, expensive. So if you were there, you could come here to save some money. Okay, here you have the modules that you can fit on your ship. This is electronic warfare, which means interfering with the sensors and the targeting capabilities of the enemies, for instance. Uh, engineering, increasing CPU and power grid, for instance. Uh, mining, hull, propulsion, as in higher speed. And the weapons, laser, hybrid and missiles. Then you have the ships. The, uh, these are the categories of all the ships. The one that I'm currently on is a frigate, which is a basic one. Basic type, the smallest one, uh, which is probably one of this. Secure, no, no. Inquisitor, no. Tormentor, no. What's my ship? I click here on info. Imperial, right. So they don't sell those, right? No, <laughs> it's like the rookie ship, they don't sell them anymore. Um, so I could get any of these ships. Problem is, if I have the skill to fly it, for instance, if I open the crucifier, click on information, I can see this requirement tab. Let's, there you go. Uh, requirements, space command one, check, I have it. I'm our frigate level one. Check, I have it. I can click all the ships have this 3D model viewer, so you can see how awesome the ship is. I definitely would love to get this one because this one is super cool with the MR logo there. This this ship has been remade. One of well, 90% of the ships have been remade recently, so they all look amazing. I could get this one, but then I have to get the modules, the weapons, and everything. So you gotta count on that. More stuff. Science and industry. This is like, I would say 50%, and it maybe not that much, maybe 40% of the game. People can gather resources, uh, manufacture, research to get better versions, better, how can I say, improved. Uh, items. They can also just, you know, sell the meat materials or the end materials to other players. You can do whatever you want. Uh, you can even do reverse engineering, which is pretty, pretty extensive. So this is for another video, and a lot of individual fits will be for another videos. Okay, what else? Corporation, the corporation that you are in, it has the offices. Uh, the wars you, your corporation is is involved in currently alliances. The map you have seen it already, and this is the ISIS. The ISIS is a newly introduced feature that allows you to to browse all the ships in the game by you know only clicking on the faction they belong to. For instance, on Amar, I right now i could fly all of this well all only those on white 
not these ones grayed out. Uh, why can I fly them? Because it checks the requirements and t uh, tell me which one I can and which I can't. So, uh, on these icons you find the... How can I say it? The main character char char characteristics of the race or the or the ship here, for instance. It it tells you if it is armor based or if it uses more shield, what type of weapons it uses. It is a small ship and everything. So I'm gonna show you a Kildari ship. This should be one of the most used ones. It's pretty cool. They are grey and blue as I told you. Okay, Galente. These ones are very rounded and asymmetrical ships. There you go. They have better examples. Let me see. The Tristan, for instance, is pretty cool. What else? The Mimata, the Scrappers. Well, you definitely gotta give them that. They really look like scrap metals put together. The Rifter is the most used Mimata ship, and it is beautiful, it's like a double X wing. <laughs> Or more these Z95 Headhunter from yeah Star Wars. Then you have industrial ships, pirate ships, and these ones are the system or Soviet ships they introduced recently. And they are pretty cool. They are exploration ships for wormholes or whatever. And they have this sci-fi clean white look. They are pretty cool. And you see the requirements for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> I mean, I can I can get on them with my main characters, but not on this one. What else? Assets. Well, not much to say here. Uh, it, it is a list of all the things you have and where you have them. In this case, I have this ship I am currently on, that's why it is green, on this station. The wallet. It is, you know, it kind of keeps all the register, all the locks of the incoming and outcoming money. Yeah, right now I only got the 5k from the NPC Corporation. Journal, this is a PVE tracker, we may say. You track from the NPC quests to uh, contracts that you have pending, as in item exchange or courier contracts that are in the game. This is for for the planets, you can, once you manufacture all this stuff, you send it to space and you go here and go and grab it. And these are the incursions. Incursions are like the Shansha faction, which is an NPC pirate faction, not pirates per se, but enemies. And they attack random uh, zones in the, in both the high, the high security areas and low security areas. So players gather together and what's this? Gather together and try to kick their asses out. This is the in-game store they introduced recently, which is cosmetic. If you wanna paint your ship, if you wanna get new clothes, you go here and buy them. You can buy them with uh how they are called? Ours. I don't know, our Aurums, Aurums. Yeah, so you can buy them with real money or you can exchange them by money in the game, you can do both. Again, this RMT aspect controlled by the company, which is pretty cool. And here you have the tutorial, which I didn't study yet. Well, yeah, if you click here, you will find... It is a lot of text, that's the problem, but they, they teach you pretty well how to, you know, handle the basics. Gonna go. Yeah, there you go, all the options. And then you have the help, which include tutorial, specific tutorials, and and general support tickets and, and wiki and whatever. So yeah, this has been 
Even Line. I'm gonna give you a quick glimpse of what's out there. I'll, next next video I'll show you these services here, the station services, and how to navigate around. Probably will be about that. The game has been, you know, revamped over the years. It has more than 10 years now, getting to 11. And, and the 3D models of the ships and the features have been wildly improved. If you check the, the flare lens, the, the effect is pretty awesome. And how it reacts with the ship. And also, you know, the lighting, if you see the lighting, it's pretty cool. The textures, the reflections, and, and everything. So, yep, yeah, that's it. Uh, I'll see you at the next video, okay? Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, the next videos will be more interactive, as in showing you and um, doing stuff. Right now, it has only been, you know, at the station, but I hope you really got a an overall idea of what Evil Line is about. You will eventually get it when I finish all the videos that I that I got planned. So yeah, see you at the next video, okay?